trying to go live. Trying to go live. Oh dear. And it says I'm live. Yeah, no problem. Connection's fantastic. Excellent connection. Everything's okay. And, and I know I'm early, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to uh, the Thinking Club. I'll uh, see if anybody wants to join in. And uh, uh, thinking, let's uh, put something in here. Thinking away. And I'll just pop in what I'm doing today here. So today is, um, well, what we're going to call it. Um, what have I got on here? Include paths, windows, uh, comments. Uh, it's comments and documentation. A lot of people argue that this is the most important part of uh, any anything. Um, well, it's not. The code is the most important part of anything when it comes down to these things. Don't let anybody tell you any otherwise. Documentation is just helpful, very helpful, very, very, very helpful, uh, totally helpful. You know, it's the kind of helpful that helpful really means to be. So there we go. <coughs> oh dear. I'm chatting. Wow. Look at me chat away to myself. Hey. Hmm. Anyway, that's beside the point. What have I got on screen? Oh yes, this will just tell us where we're up to, which is another use for the Git history. It tells you where you're up to. So I reformatted the code so I could read it. Hmm. Good idea, Blades. Um. Shall we get our adverts out of the way with? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this stream is brought to you by Amber Skies. Amber Skies is the future of networking. We are going to be developing a 3D network, uh, which you can walk around if you wish to. And it will include a set of game rules if you want to uh, create games on it. Um, I'm not going to be doing the games as well, you know. You can do that yourselves. You know what I mean? Um... Support us using Patreon, I guess. If you pop over to that page, uh, you should be able to see us there and read the details about what Patreon offers. And we do now have, I've just been checking it this morning, a uh, general Discord. So, yeah, it's there, folks. A direct talking bit that comes straight through to me so I can reply in English instead of having to type. But there we go. Main example file. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, this is left from yesterday, as is. So today we are looking at doing that. Getting rid of that. And I'm just going to relax a minute whilst people turn up if they want to. <coughs> I do so enjoy programming this way, I must admit. It's rather nice. What I was thinking is, if you're not into documentation, that kind of thing, and you want to catch up on the videos, you can go do so. But if you want to ask questions or have anything explained, uh, this is the video to watch, and if you want all of my main part 1 to 7 uh, explaining, this is the video to watch, because this is where I actually uh, look at it. And if you're learning C++, this is probably a very good way to learn, watching me document my own file. Um, so what we got so far? Uh, where's main? Main. Int main. Here we go. That's what I've got for my int main. Uh, argv and args are shown as um, argv is the count, args 
or arguments uh, are stored in an array and you can print those out or you can use them for commands within your uh, main file or wherever you want in your program really I suppose like you could have a debug command here to set the debug or release command here to set a release build and stuff like that I don't I have two totally separate pieces of code this is uh, debug code I also have a full set of release code yeah because I'm like that I like to keep it separate so as you can see we're using the new style where after we open a bracket we just hit return we put the variables in so it goes command variables and end of block and you can see that we can deal with a block at a time and it becomes more well straightforward really um so what does read text file do well if you've seen the last stream you probably already know or even the intro stream you probably don't know a lot more about it so that's been covered um, um so command oh, what, what, how am i going to describe it how did we describe it above is it is a bigger question so read text file so you can note that there we go that's all i want copy see it's already done for us and all of the read text file has been notated already as has everything else up here i can tell where i'm supposed to be going to it's here if i put a gap no i want the gap thank you so just pop that there no i'm not gonna pop it there there you go read a text file from a file on disk i'll call that i don't know and this is uh gives the full file path and name yeah and name so okay so that's that done and this is all you do so as you can see for the first part I put standard library string array uh, I've described what that part is there so and it's also an array because I've got those brackets uh, storage for the files we are going to use uh, relative file path to file 0 relative file path to file 1 it's not it isn't actually that obvious if somebody comes along who knows nothing about computers and reads it that's still gobbledygook so I haven't really made it clear I've just been lazy and just made it clear to me and that's the biggest problem of doing documentation you see I do it from my standard of my knowledge so read a text file from a file on disk is I know I knew that already because it says it in the title but it doesn't say where from in the title so from a file on disk is very important because it's not actually there next time I come to this I won't know that I'll have forgotten because I have the blank mind syndrome so I'll read it and think I don't know where it's coming from and then go and have to check so you know it's interesting the second time I go through documentation is when the documentation starts becoming more helpful uh, the first time I write it up it usually includes a lot of things I've still got stored on that memory block in my head that I've assigned to this project or whatever so um, yeah I my, my head works differently that's all um, what do we got here um, we are now going from a text file a global text file size um and we're using now 
that. So here I am going to put in, because it's not evident, um, results. Remember, there's no <coughs> return value. Results are stored in GTEx file, as far as I can tell. Global. I put that in brackets usually. So global uh, g underscore text file. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, store obj data. Uh, yeah. What can we just say about store OBJ data? Um, that will store the resulting data. into um, into a dot obj format within memory that's a good way of putting it yeah and that is the data to be used simple enough, there's no return value out of that one at all, if I can remember rightly. And that just um, delete data as we have finished with it. <laughs> That's the best way of putting it. So we're just deleting the data because there's no point in taking up the extra uh, memory space with it. Um, so we might as well just delete it. As you can see, we have to delete it bit by bit um, because it's a vector. So we have to do it in the vector way. I can't understand why I have an extra line there either. So I'll just pop that out. I was probably thinking about something at the time and missed the extra line on that side. That's why. <laughs> there you go. So as you can see, everything on the left is the actions. Everything on the right is the details of the actions. Clever. It's a clever way of um, doing your code so that it really does make sense when you read it back. <laughs> so you can see which parts, all the parts, including your variables, are doing. So your command is detailed, your variables are detailed. I mean, yeah, data to be used is the details I've given it, but you know, that's what exactly what it is. You will slide into conventions of uh, how you express yourself as you go. And over time, you'll get better and better at it, because you'll go back and you'll think, hmm, that doesn't really describe something. Let's try describing it some other way and you'll you, that that process is a learning process which you go through and uh, everybody has to go through it the first time you try this it's awful it takes forever now as you can see i can do a little bit at a time take a break have a look and say hmm, okay I can probably get through the whole program in about two to three hours, but I just want to show you how I'm doing it. And also, part one, read the data in from the two files. There you go. That's how we do it. We are using the read text file, which is above, a function that we wrote above. And we are using store obj data, which does all the functionality afterwards. Um, if you have a look at towards the end of store obj data uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find I'm hoping he says not knowingly 
here it is store opj data so it goes through detects the type of uh, line that it has and it then goes through and basically stores it into a global variable so now we've gone from what was our global variables our what do we have global here uh, our g text file we've gone from that to a complete and utter set of global variables which so all of our data is now as we know as we have finished with it uh, data to be used there's no return value so I will put now results because I won't know where the results are other otherwise well results are stored in global vectors uh, from I need that thing again don't I right at the top go to the top that one there it's full of global variables one for each part of an obj file obj file beautiful beautiful file took me ages to write and it's so damned useful i'm definitely keeping it so i'll copy that into now you know why i put a load of spaces around main so i can find it on the right hand side uh, Here we go. Results are stored in global vectors from V. Hash include models, OBJ data structure. .h. There we go. So I know where all of our data is. It's in vectors, and all the vectors are described in OBJ data structure. .h. Uh, that's a very good reminder for the future because obviously I want to know where to go to find out about what we did with it. <laughs> And if you go and read the uh, store OBJ data, it, that isn't actually obvious. It's not obvious that that's where it's storing it, I don't think, unless I've written it in there. I might have done by now. Delete. Yeah. Okay, so we're on to part two already. Wow, that was quick. Well, let's go with part two. So what have we got here? An index array, positions array, color array. Uh, convert data to open GL format okay so that will store uh, storage for the open GL uh, index 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 something or other hmm um, indexing system got it um that's storage for the open GL um, position vertices. This is storage for the open GL uh, color color and they are values not to be thought of at the, the, to be thought of RGB RGB there we go uh, rather than position vertices which are points in space there we go uh, unsigned int vertices per face uh, just uh, defines that we are using triangles there we go 
that's really what that is vertices per face being three means that three vertices make a triangle yay i think i've said that before sometime maybe many times before <laughs> oh day. so yeah it, this for people may be thinking well how do you know when you're writing to set it up like this um experience mainly i mean i wrote all of this program that i'm now notating in uh just a little over 20 minutes i didn't even think about what the variables were called it was all automatic i just plonked them all down as it, i mean if you have a look it's just a long list of commands that i'm going through there's no classes there's no functions here uh, all the functions were put at the top that i made afterwards um to make sure the thing worked so i actually wrote the functions above after i'd wrote, written the main <laughs> yeah the functions took a little bit longer they took an hour <coughs> but main just took 20 minutes of splattering stuff that i knew already down onto uh, the screen typing so i've got a double for loop hmm so we are counting through the faces counting through the faces say what you say um is that in there uh, vertices per face so that will be three. Yeah, that's right. And then for each. So this is. For each. Vertex. In a face. That's what that bit's doing. Put in English. Um, yeah, that's right, that's okay. Um, index array, so we are now storing the index value. That's what that command does. And if I don't put two thingies before it, it really complains at me. I don't blame it. What are we using? Um, count times vertices per face plus i vertex so that is the number so no that is the index number that's how you work it out index number what you have there is count and count is defined by which face now each face has three so times it by three and then we have to add on which vertex we are looking at and that's its index number so we are creating this this is not data that has been given storing the index value which we create this is not data that's been given so far we have to make this up for OpenGL. This is information we're not given. So this is what we are making up for OpenGL. If you have a look, if you put them to zero, you've got the count, which is zero, times vertices per face, three, which is zero, plus zero is zero. So the first index number is zero. And then you'll have plus one, two, three. And that will be one times three, which is three plus zero. So you'll have so you get zero one two then the next time we go around the count you get three plus four five so you get three four five and then it goes to six that's times two count it goes to two and you get six as the base plus zero so it's very easy to follow it if you just follow it through and you know that the vertices per face equals three so that's a constant I could actually put that as const on sign link. But I didn't. Now, so that's how 
that all works out because we are creating it. Which is an interesting thing. Um, it's a talking point, really, so I'm just going to sit back and talk about it for a second. Not everything that we do in OpenGL is given by data externally. Uh, there are things that we do, uh, for example, lighting. When we do lighting, we program the lighting. Uh, the index array, we create our own index array. Uh, as we put in the correct index for that point, as I'm about to show in a minute. Um, so you have to be careful what is given and what we make up. Because remember, anything that we make up is potentially the breaking point of a program. Um, so if there is a problem with the program, don't go back and look at the data. Go back and look at what you have created rather than what the data has created. Sometimes there might be a fault, say, with... I mean, that took me two attempts to get right. Uh, cause I, the first time I went through it, I just went bleh, just count plus i vertex. And I forgot to put my vertices per face in. So the second time I went through, I went, oh, the, 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 the blazer and muppet. Yeah, of course I am. Can't be expected to remember everything as I splatter things out. And I know that already, so it doesn't bother me. I would prefer a program that is 99.9% .9 correct just in 20 minutes, and then I spend the next two minutes correcting, <laughs> because I know what the program should be and look like. Um, rather than spending hours deliberating over every single function here, which I don't. I mean, in fact, I don't even write initially in this style. I, I did this layout, as you know, afterwards. I just go straight across the screen. Uh, or just press return whenever I feel like it. <laughs> it is... It's immaterial to me. I'm not trying to make a program that I'm going to be sending off to people or using for anything in the future. Now, it's a complete different kettle of fish. So I am going to spend that time. I am going to do the uh, the legwork, as it's called. Um, right, next line. Position array pushback. So here we are storing the... Uh, relative, what have we, yeah, because it's relating to this index, so it's a relative. Uh, position vertex. <laughs> and let's use the correct keyboard. Okay, let's set up again. So, store the uh, relative uh, um, position vertex singular. There we go. That's what we're asking. That's what that line is asking to do. Uh, tell the compiler we are converting to unsigned int. It might sound silly, but that's what that line does. That's all it does. It just tells the compiler. It's a compiler instruction from C++. So that... There's a few compiler instructions, I suppose, because there's not just static cast. Um, we can do different types of casting. Cast just means change the type of the variable. So we cast, as in fishing, from one variable to another. In other words, we are placing something from one spot to another. We are casting. And types of variables matter in C++. Um, so instead of making the other variable an unsigned int, we are going to cast it in place. We don't assign the other thing to 
be an unsend unit because that would mess another part of the program up <laughs> if you get my drift so we can't always use the variable types that we want to so we should reuse the variable types that we should do and that way things will work better any more of these yeah there's tons so that's all these static casts notated yeah there's a lot of them because the instruction that I'm using crosses a lot of boundaries as we're about to look at so but this one line of it doesn't really do much there we go that's all my static casts done store the relative position of the vertex yes please and this is the awkward bit this is where the data is stored this line where we stored the data so it's a G isn't it yeah so this is all this is about here is that in if you go and have a look at model G face element count <laughs> can we yeah of course we can model you can see all the structures are now and you can see all the G's G vertex normal they're all in here there we go this is it um, I'm not sure it is actually this is um, which structure is this G face elements So I was looking at G face element. Yeah, G face element. So it's this one. Um, there we go. So if you have a look at G face element, it's this structure here. Remember, structures are just a class, but public. And our structure has all of these bits in it. So we can reference all of these bits, but as you can see, there are arrays. So they need an index value as well. So when you come back to this, we're having to put in index values here. So the face that we're looking at is count, which comes from here, counting through the faces. So that's the face, and we know that's the face because we're counting through them, and I've said it there that we are. There we go counting through the faces so there we go that part is then explained but inside there we want to access a particular part that has sorry we're on this line here we want to <laughs> we want to access a particular part that has position vertex okay so if you have a look back here our position vertex is there our texture coordinates are there. Those are indexes. Do we actually have the data here? Or are these all indexes? So these are all indexes. Yeah, these are all indexes. So we're accessing an index. So positions array index. This is an index. So why haven't I put an index on the end of there? Or at the beginning? If these are all indexes, where does it transform? Mm-hmm. That gets rid of all the globals, yeah creates a window and I've put the deer around gooey stuff in just to make it complicated create a shade into GFX card yeah so once we get those indexes in they are transferred to data here it goes mm -hmm. I don't think those are indexes you know 
one easy way to know. Int, 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 yeah. Huh. There you go. So I have lost myself in my own program. Doesn't make sense. I vertex, index vertex. Unsigned index vertex. Count and vertex. We're not putting in anything else. Ah, yeah, that's right. Where we stored the data. Um, I remember now because we split it down, didn't we? Oh, clever me. Clever, clever me. I did this? Yeah, I did. Where we stored the data at uh, position. Where we stored the data full stop. That's it. And that's the data itself. The data. That's the next line. That's why it just befuddled me. I forgot. We're going downwards, aren't we? So that's where we stored the data. And that's the actual data. As you can see, float model vertex MX <laughs> was stored at that position. And that's storage. Uh, was done by the previous area or part one here within memory so that's done by that line well that that block there goes through and stores everything and we are can now retrieve it <coughs> we can now retrieve it from wherever we stored it we can then retrieve the data itself and if you on a system like this, it's very nice because if you hold over, it'll tell you that that's an array, and that's a vector, and that's your vertex. Perfect, because of the way we've programmed it. Um, fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. We have to do it three times. So that repeats, repeat, uh, for the Y value, repeat for the Y value. Repeat for the Z value. I might extend this later. Repeat for the uh, Z value. A lot of copy and pasting went on at this point, doing this part of the code. <laughs> I can tell you. Put four stops at the end to make sure that I know that I've finished my thought. Uh, that's X, Y, Z. And yes, a W value. Uh, yeah. Repeat for the W value. Okay. Again. Repeat for the red color value. I'm not detailing it all again because as you can see it's the same thing repeated but using different variables. Please note we use m current color rather than m vertex index at this point. We do change the variables over. <laughs> We're not that silly. Uh, repeat. Repeat for the green value. That's all we're actually doing. 
you see, I can get through a lot of this very quickly. Repeat for the blue value. When you when I say documenting, you don't need to literally repeat yourself over and over and over again. You know, <laughs> do you? No, but it's just obviously. I'm just putting in simple reminders. Repeat for the transparency. Transparency or alpha. Alpha value. Yeah, I did that right. And there we go, we're done. Uh, we need three positions to make a triangle. Error. Simple error message. Yeah, I do do it. I do notate these. Message to uh, the error console. Not to the console, as people may think. That is a separate. That's console is C out. Uh, C error is an error console. And some things that you may use to program with can use that. So there we go. I've been through everything here. Um, if you are notating anything of this or you are writing anything of this down, uh, all you have really is that one block repeated over and over and over again. In this part here it's MX, MY and Z and W is what you change. In this block you change it to M current color, M red, M green, and M blue. So those three go together. And that's in the colors array, not the positions array. Uh, and the last one is in the colors array as well, because it's the alpha value, which we use. As you noticed, I'm doing a clear window. Hmm, interesting thoughts I'm having. So that's your colours. I'm just holding it on screen to make sure that I don't start flicking my mouse wheel like I usually do. So if you want to pause this transmission or video, because it'll be a video later, you know. Um, so it'll be a video stored on YouTube. If you want to come back to it and pause here, you can. Uh, that's your error checker. And uh, part three. Delete used model. Model column column global vectors from storage. Again, that is needs to be notated. And I haven't done. It's that bit again that I haven't put in. Maybe I was just being lazy at the time or but this was on passing. I haven't put this in today. Uh isn't vectors from storage at all. It's, that's where the vectors are from. So that's updated. Um, it doesn't need anything there, I don't think. It's just deletes. Keep that on screen a second. All I'm doing is going through everything that I've used. Note, there are lots, lots, lots more in there uh, that you could use. You can mix and match all of these G's, globals, um, for whatever you need. I only needed the vertex, vertex normal, faces, uh, the material file names, uh, materials, material names, and uh, the diffuse color. That's all I needed. Uh, to create my box uh, or to read enough information out of the .obj file to create my box so that's all I did um, part 4 create an OpenGL window I noted when I did it on Saturday, last Saturday at uh, the intro just hold that on the screen a second once I have a coffee. Hmm. 
I'm not joking. If you want to put anything in chat, you can do. I don't mind. If you want to distract me from doing notations and doing some actual programming, please feel free. <laughs> I could really do with a distraction right now. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, I'll just put my email in. Uh, so it's D A O C Amber Skies at Google Mail. That's M A I L dot com. There you go. Um, anything else? I would put my Patreon in, but I can't remember how that goes. So. That's how interested I am in Patreon. I'm more interested in people contacting me by mail, uh, which people have done already, as you may know from last Sunday's video, if you watched it. Uh, Naval, Naval 7, number 7. Rather good, rather good. Nice, easy stream, that one. I didn't gain too many difficulties this time. <laughs> oh, bless, please. You, I, have, I do have fun with all of this. I really do. Uh, for information only, I'm doing gel version. Yeah, that's fine. Dear Aunt Gooey. Um, let's see what I can put in here, because I don't know what anything about Aunt Gooey. So, Constitar, um storage for the version of GLSL we shall be using which is 3.30, I always use version 3.30 don't worry about it um, because I know how 3.30 is going to respond it's going to respond in a very basic way and it's not going to try and suddenly give me things like uh, bloom effects uh, when I haven't asked for them or anything stupid like that um for information press on I thought I did for information uh, I'll do. um create the OpenGL context um, note can only be done after the window creation full stop and I seem to be being invaded. Hello, invasion. Can I help you? Excuse me. Can I help you? Hey. Can I help you? No. Can it be done later? Hey? Could it be done later, please? Can it be done later, please? Um, well, it's just jumped up in there, but I wanted to Okay, alright, so we're going to have a disturbance in the background. No, that's fine. Just keep your voice down, love. Be kind to people out there. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Bit of a disturbance going on behind me. Um, I have no idea what this line of gobbledygook means. And I have no idea why I need a variable void I.O. Hmm, I.O. stands for input output. So it's obviously setting up its input output. Right, okay. Sets up the GUI input output streams as far as I can tell from just looking at it um, yeah I don't even know if that line is needed this is one of the one that I will test if 
before I continue with this, I will test that. In fact, I'll test it whilst I'm here. Is it needed? Launch. See if we get wiggly woggly bits happening. There you go. Gave us a warning. And everything's working. So yes, it's needed. It's needed to stop a warning, is the answer. So yeah, we got a warning. Uh, I'll just shut you down. And use variable IO. So that's why they've done it, to stop a warning. Fair enough. So that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, stops the unused variable warning when compiling. And that's what it does, that line. So now I know what it does. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. Completely useless line that does nothing. Set up the I am GUI style. I'm not sure why you need your own line for that. So we'll pop that over here. Set up platform renderer bindings. Oh right, that's that's this impl. What impl means? Hmm. I'm not sure about what this is doing, so let's have a look at it. Get GR window. Yeah, I know what that's doing. So really what that's doing, that's initializing, because it's an init, so that initializes, uh, I'm GUI for GLFW, and uses the window glfw window uses the glfw window that we created okay what does true mean comma install callbacks Uh, true equals install callbacks or glfw. Now I don't know what callbacks it's installing, but I know I've got my own anyway, so I don't care. I've already written into our glfw window um, call the callbacks for the mouse and the keyboard, so I'll be using our window anyway but that will allow callbacks into, I'll show you, GLF callbacks, oops. What that's referring to is the part of I'm GUI that allows us to do things like that, where it's changing a value between zero and one, or doing the color picker. This is all the callbacks. The callbacks allow it to interact with the buttons and change values. And if you do put zero in 
the GLFW window and you compile it properly and do a make clean on the Amber Skies SL, yes, you can get that to go at 1,600 frames per second. Quite interesting, but I didn't actually manage to do it last night. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot. Why did I do it? I wanted to actually prove a point at the time, but it doesn't really matter now. I'll prove that point when we get to it. So now I've been able to notate that in a simplistic way. Um, there it is. Okay, so what's this one? Let's try and interpret what it says here. This initializes. So let's see, it's an init. I, uh, I'm G UI for OpenGL. And it's three point something. See, it doesn't tell us. Uh, and that's wrong. It's just OpenGL full stop uh, uses. Uh, the value we chose. So that's not just OpenGL, that's OpenGL and GLSL. Be careful with that, because that is not an OpenGL number. That is a G that is GLSL. That's written in GLSL, should I say. So they obviously have a shader somewhere uh, d rendering their um, window, which is obvious because it's got a render, and it'll have a shader for that. And it will put at the top of that shader hash version 330, and it'll use that version, I hope. Probably it'll I hope it doesn't use version 300. It'll just mess everything up. Um, I don't know what this is. It just says store a color. Stores a color in RGB. Uh, alpha A format. That's the correct format, which is red, green, blue, alpha. There we go. Is that done? I should really go into more details with these and look them up properly, but I'm not really fussy because I, I know how it works roughly, uh, which is good enough for me. It works in the same way as uh, the old 1.1 um, OpenGL works. Mind you, I suppose it probably has to, so it can then operate in under any OpenGL. So that makes sense when you think about it, because we're choosing. So if I put 100 or a 120, I think it is, 120 in there, we will get a very basic version. Uh, which is quite interesting because I like that version, but I just don't use it. <laughs> there we go. Um, create the shaders, shader file name. Store the shader file name. Unsigned int program ID um, storage uh, of an identifier. There we go. 
what's this? It's an unsigned int array. So we have an array. for shaders for the shaders the two shaders uh, vertex comma fragment uh, um, initialize to zero. Okay. So this creates all right. This is difficult to explain. It looks so simple. Uh, GL create program. What does it do? Does it create a program? No, it doesn't. Um. It asks for space on GFX board, comma, returns an identifier for that space. Yeah, okay. It, that's exactly what it does. It asks for your graphics board um, for a page of memory or a space or where do you want me to locate my program in your memory. Uh, the GFX board will say, I want you to use this section. I'll reserve this section for you, but just tell me where you want to use it. I'll give you this number to refer to this section. So it could be zero, it could be one. I think it starts at zero actually. So hey ho. So your program ID is actually a number. And your graphics card knows that if when given that number, it knows which space on the graphics part for graphics board memory that refers to. So it's a intelligent little thing. Now let's have a look at shader zero. Okay. Yeah. Does that look right? Yes, it does. So here. Um, we've created a function called create shader. So let's use our function to create a shader. That's what that line is. We, we've, uh, we've done it. So there we go. What does this bit do? Um, that is load shader model. Come on, come on, load shader. Okay. Use our yeah embedded functions function to load the shader from file so what we have is an outside function and an inside function so this inside part is totally separate to that outside and C++ goes inner to outer when doing the instruction set or converting it to an instruction set. Uh, that's just the file path and name. To use. And that returns. What does it return? Load shader. You see, I don't even know my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to know other people's. 
Alright, so I can I know where it is. Uh, I can look. That's create shader. Where's a load shader? There we go. It returns a string, so that returns the shader itself. Okay, that's fine. So that line there is returns the shader as a text string. It's important because if you look at that part there, it's asking for a string. There we go. And this is the famous GL OpenGL enum system. Open GL enumeration uh, for the vertex shader. And that enumerates to OX, which means hexadecimal. So that is 8B31. There you go. It expands to OX 8B31. If you go there, it'll say to OpenGL or your graphics card, hey, that's a vertex shader. If it's a 1 or a 0. It's, if it's a 1, it's a vertex shader. If it's 0, it isn't. Um, OpenGL is a state machine. It's a load of switches. So that's the way it works. It just switches the vertex shader on. And when we go to the next stage, it will check whether the vertex shader has been switched on. And that will happen within uh, Create Shader. It will do that check. So there you go. That's how that works. So uh, Just remember that OpenGL is just ones and zeros. All you're doing is flicking a switch. Or asking the graphics card for something. <laughs> Which is obvious when you think about it. Create Shader. Uh, that's a repeat of that one. Except we don't ask for more space, we just create it alongside or in the space after. So, as above. As above for... the fragment shader there we go that's that done so that gets us down to here lovely so i've got two created shaders Okay, yeah, this is quite strange. Ask open GL to recognize, recognize. No, it's not ask, it's tell. Tell open GL about our shaders. The program which will use the shaders. And of course, the shaders themselves. There we go. That's that. Is there a return value off that? I think there is. Hash define. Glue get function, not fun. <laughs> God, I hate abbreviations. No, 
that's fine. That just goes straight through to the uh, graphics card. That's fine. Um, this has to be done before linking, so we've got a note here. Note. Uh, we have to uh, bind attributes, bind our attributes before linking as this uh, as we will not have access after compilation and that's the truth so what we have to do is we have to slip in two little attribute locations uh, this makes it messy in QT you can get you can work around that because QT does this automatically for you and then allows you to grab it after you're linking. So in C++, sorry, you don't get that luxury. We have to grab it here and now. Um, so this is... That's a note. So here we'll just uh, bind as It's OpenGL um, to bind an attribute to a location. Um, in the shader, that's the bit that's missing. That's the bit that the instruction isn't telling us. Bring that back into there. Okay, that's better. Uh, the program to use. The shader program to use. Um, zero, what does zero mean? That's the attribute location. Know what that is? The ah uh, there attribute location defined within the shader program within the shader. Full stop. And if you look in the shader, you will see that attribute location zero or layout location zero equals um, position, vec4, position. And it'll be there in the shader at the top. I know, because I wrote it. <laughs> ha ha. And that is what it refers to. Uh, the variable name. So that's the attribute variable name. There you go. And it's exactly the same for this one. So I'm just going to copy it. Just to fill it out. Uh, shader to use, shader program to use, yeah, it's the same. Uh, the attribute location defined within the shader. See why I do things generically. <coughs> this is after practicing doing documentation for a while. You start doing more generic things because it's easier on you, yourself doing things like that. Even though the left hand side is something different, the right hand side can say the same thing. Okay. 
uh, link and okay link the code into the final program we can't access it then after that point because it's in ones and zeros machine code we can still access it at this point because it's in assembly language if you wanted to know uh, <coughs> the program ID for the linked code you see how the program ID never changes <laughs> all the way through this and returns our code to the area of GFX memory at program ID. There you go. I, c I always say GFX is graphics card. I should put card in, really. I call it GFX for short, my graphics card. What do we got here? <coughs> <laughs> Has the program compiled? Correct. Uh, the program to use to check um, open GL enumeration a switch in other words an on off switch um, for linking status so if you put a one in there uh, it knows what what we're checking uh, true means that it's a program I know because I wrote that function true <laughs> true equals uh, a program uh, yeah just put program comma false equals always put the false in false equals shader check that's what that does and that's just uh, error message error message if needed no return value no return as program um, may fail to continue. No, but it'll stop if it's not right. Continue. There we go. Put it in English. La 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 la. We're getting through this quite well. So that's what those do. But now you know a bit more about them. Um, which is good. But as you're going through something like that, you're actually learning your own program as well at the same time. I mean, I've done this before, so I actually know this program a little bit better than I should do. I am in the same seat as you, Luna. Little program. No, it's not that bad, really, honestly. Uh, I'm not married to it or anything. Haha. <laughs> <coughs> on the right hand side look at this now we're all the way down here oh, lovely oh, we're nearly at part six good god uh, finish off this part so validate program id yeah um, ask your gfx board if 
this is a valid program. That's what it says. I bet you never ever saw it worded like that. But that's what it's actually saying. <laughs> uh, the program to check is that one. Oh, it's on the graphics board. It's it's not on in main memory at this point. So we'll have to ask the graphics card to do everything. Uh, this is just as before. Has the program compiled correctly? So there we go. We do it twice. We do it once for the compiler. We do it once for the graphics card. Yeah. I know, it's quite strange, isn't it? It's not... I mean, when we compile C++, we do exactly the same kind of process, except for this last bit, which we do by running it usually, or debugger, using a debugger on it. So this could be con construed as a debugger on the graphics card. Which it is, really, I suppose. It has one. Uh, is valid status open GL enumeration? Again, for validation, it's not status really, it's just validation. Don't think we titled that one right. Uh, true is true equals program, false equals shader, it's still the same program we're using. Which is why I wrote it because we will get to use it quite a few times, as you can tell. We get to use it once, twice. Do we have to use it up here as well? No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. We have to use... We should be using it here as well. Somewhere. We should be validating these. Don't know if we are or not. Could be inside the actual create shader itself. But there you go. So I know it's using it for the shader somewhere. Um And this is tell the GFX board which program to run. The program to use. So it's a very simple idea. What you do is you create a program in your graphics card memory it assigns, say, the number 1 to it. And when you say, use program 1, the graphics card knows which one to run when required. And it acts like a switch. So when we ask the graphics card to run a program, any program, it will look to see which program ID, and it will then run at that program ID. There you go. Good air. Eh? And then we're into transferring data to GFX card. So I'll continue that myself. Um, I, I'm not sure how interested you are in all this kind of thing. Uh, please give feedback on this video, whether you want me to not do this in private and to talk about these things, or whether you want me to do this in private because you know what these things already do. <laughs> you ain't that you bothered. But I'm explain these in a very very basic way uh, because they are very very basic things and fundamentally OpenGL is very simple it's just remembering which order of switches you want to click on and off and sometimes the order doesn't even matter yeah it's that weird um, so I can't save it yet but yeah, that's how it's going to look. You can see how now that the program, again, has split down to two sides. The code and the English. <laughs> so, if you think this is a good idea, a, a good way of going through a program and learning what it does, then let me know. I'm quite happy to do this uh, for more of the programs that I have available to me. And I've got a lot at the moment in here. Uh, we don't just have, m we have module 1, we have everything yet. I haven't done any of these. 
script. So if I look at the rendering engine, I've got a master renderer. Well, look at the notes. What's better that? Do you would you prefer that or would you prefer that? It's not more complicated. In fact, it's less complicated because here you can see the block for each code. Here you can see a line for each code. What's easier for people? I don't know. I used to think this. It isn't. Not for me anymore. I prefer this. Well, hey ho. You've got choices. It's a free country. Well, free internet. It's a free club. Yeah, Thinking Programming Club. Coming to you as free as free can be. So I will talk about any uh, subject you wish to talk about. And I'm going to wrap up this video here and now. Uh, my fingers are hurting. <laughs> yeah, I know I've only got through about 1 hour 20. But, you know, it's, it's actually um, hard keeping the speed going uh, for me, me and my fingers. Um, if you do want me to stop and continue this as from part 6 and type in the next parts say so very very quickly you got about 30 minutes to say so either in chat well you got 1 minute to say so in chat or 30 minutes to say so um, in the open thingy below responses below this when it goes into the well video format so there we go Thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching. Um, it has been a joy to know that people actually want to see this and want to see code being explained properly. I was a little bit shocked because this is what I do. This, is, this was my job for 25 years, explaining difficult concepts um, in a simple and easy way. I've got a lot of experience of it. I don't teach. I just look at things differently. So, on that note, I'm going to say fare ze well, take care, and have fun.